Hello everyone, welcome back. I made another tutorial. This one is made for uh, Clip Studio Paint monthly tips for October. The subject was cute creatures. So I'm gonna give some tips of what makes a creature look cute, other basic elements that you can follow, and the uh, small observations I did along the way. And hopefully it's going to be good information so that you can start and make your own cute creatures. So first things first, uh, what do we think about when we hear the word cute creatures? It's usually big eyes, small mouth, fluffy maybe, right? That Those are the basic things that can make any character look cute. So here I made a cute little fox. Please note that I didn't stay too much on details, you can always add them later. The most important part is uh, easy to read shape. However, those elements are not the only one that can look cute. You can actually go around it and make a small head with a bigger mouth and small eyes. And it can still look cute. Also, you don't need to add fluff everywhere, but a bit of puff would, would look cute. So here is the base for a cute little duckling. You can also adjust any body parts at this stage. So this is just a sketch base and a color base. We want to make an easy to read shape. After that we can always come back and add details. After I was happy with the overall shape of the characters, I made a new layer and just went back and redid the line art. I'm using a textured brush that is similar to a pencil. There's also no need for super straight lines. You can leave them a bit rough around the edges. It's because it's a texture brush, you don't need to be very precise with it. However, you can use any type of brush you want, just find something that you're very comfortable with. Because if you're comfortable with a brush, you would actually speed up the whole process. And here I like to add some line weight. I think that's what you call it, just smaller lines and thicker lines in different places. This is going to add more charm to the overall character and also more space to it. And it's also guiding the eye to specific areas that you want to accentuate. So you can notice once you have a good sketch, it's really easy to just make a new layer and just work on it. It's speeding up the process a lot and it's also very fun to see the before and after. Here I'm using the sketch layer to actually pinpoint the shadows I already made and then just working on the actual layer. I'm using the lasso tool to select the specific area and after that I just go around it with the normal pen brush that I use for the line art. Since it's already a texture brush, I think it looks very cute for fur elements. And just work one step at a time. There's also no need to overdo things. Just start with the base color, the base shadow, and the base highlight. And uh, for the shadow placements, just think of it in terms of what's closer to you is lighter and what's further away it's darker. This is just a simplified version of where to put light and shadow. So in case of the duckling, the tail is farther away, so I added it in shadow. And the underwing is farther away than the head or the top part of the wing. Therefore, I added shadow to it. Also think of the shadow placement as in adding a bit of a shadow where an element ends and another one starts. Does that make sense? So for example, the head starts at the top, so you can add shadows around it, like under the chin or where the ear starts, also closer to the eyes, and elements that are actually pushing down on the shape. A shadow looks heavy, so add it in certain places to enhance the, the shape. And for the light, just the same thing as the shadow, just add it to, to places that are 
um, how should I say it, stick, stick out a bit, such as the nose or the forehead. So just, just to simplify a bit, add highlight to bumpy areas and add shadows to uh, a dent area. Now this is really, really simplified, but it usually works. Oh, and don't forget to add a bit of shadow when an element and that's also available for highlight. You can actually add a bit of highlight there as well, especially if you want the character to, to pop off the background and uh, stand out. So uh, keep everything simple. Uh, cuteness comes in simple, easy to read outline of the character. Details uh, like fur, texture, glow are a fantastic touch, but will only enchant the shape we already have. If the overall shape we have it's not easy to read, having extra details will only make it very hard to understand and distinguish the shape. Always leave details for last, it's important to focus on having a good base. Ok, so moving on, where, where should you start? I would say start with circles and or triangles because you can find them in most creatures. Yes, you can use square shapes as well. It can look cute. Just use them sparingly because they remind you of very harsh material such as cubes, bricks, walls. And it might be just a bit difficult to make it look cute. So here I'm just uh, I just tested out a base for a cat made out of triangles and a very round dog <laughs> made with circles. So I think the shape is easy to read, it looks fine. I just added a bit of color and shadow just to see if it will continue to read ok. I'm just leaving them at the sketch phases because it, it's good enough. You can always come back and just re draw the lines and remade them. So for another test I did the same animals, just reversed. So a very round cat with a very um, triangular dog, well triangle shapes for the dog. And they also read fine, so choose whatever shape you want depending on the character you want to make and uh, the feelings you want to show. In this case I actually prefer the first version where the cat is more pointier. <laughs> I think it goes well with the pose and the, probably the personality. So for proportions, keep a ratio of about 40 to 60 percent of a main thing in relationship with another main thing. So let's say a 60 percent head in comparison with 40% body proportions. Just be mindful that if you make around 50-50% the elements win will compete with each other and there won't be any focal point or main interest to catch your eye. So it's important to well not have equal numbers I guess. You can also make 30 to 17% so that's fine too. Here you can see the differences and how the first two characters actually look better proportionately than the second two where you have 50-50. And this also applies to like face elements in relationship to one another. So you can either have big eyes with small mouth or small eyes with big mouth. Just don't do them 50-50 because it can actually look a bit spooky. But if you're going for a horror looking character, you, you might want to try that approach. As always, just test things out and see how you like them. If something feels off, you might want to change the size. It might just be as easy as that. Ok, so the proportions and the shapes are out of the way, so let's, let's add a bit of flair to the characters. Personality is important and it's probably the first thing you notice in a creature. You can make them grumpy, hyper, indifferent, confused. It's a really fun thing to just play around with a personality type. Also make sure to use colors to express a certain personality type. Here I wanted to make a very grumpy character. So I used a lot of blue 
and purple to also express that. This fish already looks very blue. <laughs> and for the, the second character, I wanted it to be very flirty and happy and joyous. So also be mindful of the pose to actually express the personality and also the colors. Here I'm using pink and yellows because those are very happy colors and uh, can express a very loving looking character. So play, play around with personality and colors. And on the second part, emotions are important too. So I'm just going to simplify it and say of uplifting emotions. So that's positive emotion. Those are always pulling you up. In comparison to negative emotions that are usually pulling you down. <laughs> so that's a very easy way to express a character emotion. Of course, there are always, always other complex emotions, but the basic elements, lines or face features go up or down, depending on a positive or a negative emotion. Can you see how easy it is to actually read a character by emotion if you go with this pattern? Please note that you can have any type of personality and emotions and can still have a very cute looking character. So it's all about how you play around with simple and easy to read shapes and proportions and balancing them out. And so, so play around and see what you like and what does the character express. And for the last part, I'm uh, writing down other elements to consider when designing or drawing a cute character. So I start off with long elements. That means tails, legs, neck, they can give the impression of something elegant or majestic. Just think of a fox or an Egyptian cat. It's probably not the first cute thing you think about, but you can make it work and make it a memorable design. However, please note the downside is that it can also look a bit goofy and it's also easy to see why. Adding long elements means the character needs to be witty and smart, so he will be able to handle it. I mean, just think about how hard would it be to walk and easily trip if you have very long legs. So a character actually can look elegant and majestic or very goofy. <laughs> Still cute in both ways. Just, just be mindful of the design and where you want to take it or what do you want to like represent it or express. There are different levels of cuteness so keep that in mind and don't forget have fun it's all about experimenting and figuring out what works for a specific character. Here I'm just adjusting a bit the colors so it will look more pleasing. I also changed the eyes on the snow leopard. Leopard. Snow leopard. Another thing to consider is the the chunkiness. <laughs> I mean, it, it can always look cute and huggable and it it's usually in rounder shapes. So this is uh, an easy cuteness level. However, on the downside, it can, it can maybe look very heavy or actually a burden for the character. And it all depends how you use it and in what quantity. So here I made as an example a really fluffy sheep, a, a bit too fluffy. It, it, I don't think he's very happy with it, <laughs> but it can still look cute. Same with um, less chunkiness or <laughs> not chunkiness. And this one might be a little pretty, a bit tricky to make and also make it look cute. But same as with the long elements, it might show class or elegance or superiority. I will go back to the Egyptian cat example or maybe like a Doberman. The not chunky characters might actually look longer. Just, just be mindful on when and how you use it because a character can also maybe look a bit um, a sickly. But as always, you can 
make it work in your advantage and make it look cute. Another thing to consider are um, human elements, such as outfits or uh, biped creatures. This can also make a or break a character. You don't want it to look too human because it might not be cute anymore. However, one or two outfit items can actually look cute. But, but if there are too many of them, too many outfit items, it will detract from the creature character. It will actually look more human. So, depending on the idea of what you want to represent of or accomplish, just, just be mindful of that as well. Usually a creature wearing a outfit element looks cute, so you probably can go wrong with it. Another part is um, the size. Size is important. Usually small things are cuter, but you can always switch around and maybe make it a, a giant looking creature. You might need to add an extra object so that the size of the character can be easily read. However, if the character is already in a cute outline, has a cute base, this type of change will not affect it at all. Just make sure to add, add maybe another item so you can see the difference in size. Well, in this case, the human looks just very tiny. If you take the first bear separate from the second one, one looks like a giant and the second one looks very tiny. That it can fit under a flower. And the last thing is uh, just consider there are other species around. So you can actually make a, a cute strawberry biped creature or a fruit or even a cute robot. The baseline is the same for any type of creature. So you can make any type of creature just look cute. It doesn't necessarily have to be a traditional pet looking character. On the downside is if you're combining two elements, the, the design might be really hard to read or understand. So keep, keep it simple. So that was it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.